Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's look is a super, super exciting one. It is a how to makeup look. So basically I give you tips and tricks on how to contour and highlight your face along with other tips like how to, you know, basically get that Instagram look without having the the feel that you actually tried kind of thing. So I give you so many tips and tricks on how to contour your face, highlight your face, where to apply all the products to get the the most out of your makeup look. I really hope you guys enjoy it. It is a natural glam look as you guys can see. It doesn't look like you know, I haven't got any false lashes on. I do minimal eyeshadow. It's all skin focused. Like I do so much focus on the skin. A little bit on the eyes but mainly on the skin. Just to give you guys the best yeah, like the best result of your makeup, like I said. I also do give you tips on how to cover your acne scars and breakouts because I do have a few of those at the moment. So I really guys, I hope you guys get a lot out of that as well. And also help you oily beauties out there because I am an oily skin girl. I give you tips on how to control your oils by doing different steps in your makeup routine that help keep your oils at bay to get the most out of your wear. But yeah, without further ado guys, I hope you guys do enjoy it. Make sure to give a big thumbs up before you leave and subscribe down below as well so you guys can join my YouTube fam. Otherwise, I'll see you guys very, very soon. I love you all so much and I hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. Woo. Every time I swear, like I do that transition when I'm editing like from glam to like before glam, I'm always just like, whoa, like, is that what I look like? So, first of all, I always like to cleanse and moisturize my skin before any makeup routine. I always go in actually and exfoliate as well. Like, um, what I usually like to do is I like, use quite a natural like exfoliating cleanser and I'll use that and like kind of cleanse my skin as well as like kind of exfoliate it a little bit before I go in with makeup just to get rid of any dead skin, dry patches, anything like that to stop it like clinging to the face. Then I like to go in and moisturize with my um, Emprazone like it's like a kind of natural gel so it's full of like active ingredients which actually helps to heal the skin as well as like moisturize I've done a skincare routine so I'll leave that linked up above and I'll go into more detail if you guys are curious but I just like to use that to kind of like heal my skin as well as moisturize it and just prep it for the makeup so next once I've like exfoliated moisturized like cleanse my skin and all that jazz I go in with a facial oil it's the Mabox Vitamin C Serum. I'm just going to apply a couple drops of that to my skin. And the Vitamin C in the actual product just helps to kind of heal any like sun damage on the skin. Helps protect it and just is really good. It's really good for your skin. So I just like to use that as like a prepping kind of thing. And it also helps create like a nice tacky base for the makeup that we're going to apply on top. So next what I like to do, because I am quite an oily skin girl, I like to go in with a little bit of like translucent powder. This is the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I've used this again in my last couple of routines. So I just like to take it from the cap like so, just a light dusting of it, and I'll apply it to my T-zone, a really light amount. If you do go in with too much, it'll like start to cake up under the foundation. So I just like to use a small layer of it and just wipe it all over the skin and just kind of create that kind of barrier for the oil so that they don't seep through into my foundation throughout the day. If you're more on the dry side, don't do it. You don't need to. So next to kind of give a pop to the cheekbones if you guys are wanting more of like an accentuated cheekbone, I like to go in with a little bit of cream highlight first before I go in with my foundation. Some people apply it all over the skin. I think it's unnecessary. It's just going to accentuate the things that you don't want like your pores, your blemishes, things like that. So I'm just actually going to apply this to the high points of the cheekbones which is actually along here. I've been applying it here and lately I've just realized like that's actually the wrong spot. You know you want to apply your highlight like if you can see just to like that high point of the cheekbone. So I'm just applying it with my finger to the high points of the cheekbones, which is just along here. You just see that beautiful glow, it's just subtle, it's going to peek through the foundation. And we apply it just over top, and I'll curve it up along the temple as well. But I won't apply it anywhere near the centre of my face, because like I said, I don't want that looking any more shiny or glossy or glowy than it already will be later on in the day, like my body... <laughs> does it naturally for me. So I just did it to the high points of the brow cheekbone. 
that kind of area. So first of all, I'm going to go in with some foundation. I've been loving the raw one lately. It's really good for the skin. It's full of natural ingredients and I like a more like natural finish to the skin in terms of like I don't like to have like no imperfections showing through. Yeah, I'll cover up my acne scars, but I actually like to have my freckles showing through, you know, a few blemishes just to make it actually look like skin, not like I've just put like a cake face mask on top. So I apply it with my finger just evenly over the skin. And then I'll go in with my kabuki brush. This one's from Sigma and I'll just very lightly blend it around the face. So once I've gone in with the brush and kind of evenly spread it out, blended in slightly, I'm actually going to take my damp beauty sponge. This is from Ecotils. And I'm just going to further blend that into the skin. I just find a beauty sponge just helps it really melt into the skin. And you can just see like the glow peeking through that foundation. That's just so pretty. And it just literally just gives such a lift to the cheekbone. Just having that sitting there just because it does bring light to that area. So it automatically will lift it up. Whereas when we create the shadow later on with contouring and things, it will kind of like sink that back. So it'll just give the shape to the face. So that in itself is enough coverage for me. I like, like I said, a more natural finish to the skin. If you guys like, the, if you guys like more coverage, then by all means, you do you. But next I'm going to actually move on to like concealing up all these little acne scars and breakouts before I go in and contour. Because these are quite like angry and red, I might do a bit more of a full coverage um, technique to them. Whereas usually I'll just go in with concealer right over top. Sometimes that'll do it, but I feel like, like these ones around here, that won't cover it up enough. So I'm actually going to take this NYX concealer like green base and apply like a thin, thin layer to the acne spots that I want to conceal up. I do recommend it because the green counteracts with the um, the redness on the skin. So sometimes when you do apply makeup on top, you can kind of get that grey undertone to those spots on your skin when they're just peeking through, like there's just not enough coverage to them. So this green just helps to counteract that greyness. So I go in with my finger, literally I'll tap off even like excess of that because I just felt that was too much. I'll just lightly go over top. Just a smidgen. So once I've applied the green, just a light layer, like you can see, nothing too crazy. I'm going to take my concealer. This is the Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the shade Medium Win. It literally matches my skin tone so perfectly. That's why I love using it so much in like all my videos. I just find it's the perfect undertone and colour to my actual skin. I also like to kind of highlight the face a little bit center of the forehead just a smidgen and center of the chin. I like to bring that concealer right under the contour of my cheekbones. You can see it just creates a little line and it's so beautiful it just helps kind of hug that that cheekbone there and give a bit of definition. I'll blend it out so it's not so harsh but it'll be like a subtle highlight under that cheekbone to give that a bit more accentuation to sculpt the face a bit more like I said when you're doing like contouring concealing you're also playing with dimensions of the face um, that's how you get the beautiful like sculpted look so I'll take my kabuki brush this is the tapered one from Sigma the F86 I believe and I'm blending the edges of the concealer I'm not blending over top I'm barely touching the edges. If you start blending over top of that concealer, like over the breakout, you're just going to disturb all the product and it's going to move and you're going to lose all that coverage. And I'm just going to quickly conceal under my eyes. I always like to focus most of the product here on the inner part of the eye. I don't actually bother bringing the product out because I'll just blend it out. So less concealer under my eyes means less likely to crease, less cakiness. And I'm also going to conceal the eyelids up. The more product you have sitting on your skin, the more likely it's going to fall into those creases. So I always like to use less is best techniques. So something a bit more full coverage with the concealer, like the Instant Age Rewinds. Just using a little bit of that goes a long way. What a difference concealer makes. Like, what a difference. So good. So good. 
So now that we're looking quite like flat, I want to bring some shape back to the face. This is where we're going to get that chiseled kind of contour look, a bit of structure and everything like that, warmth of the skin, all that jazz. So I like to go in with my Hoola Quickie Contour Stick from Benefit. So I'm just going to apply this to the contours of my cheeks. So right, when you suck in right in between your jaw. So this kind of shadow right here when you suck your cheeks in. He just kind of sculpts it out. And then I'll bring it up the sides of my temples and shape the forehead with that as well. So we want that natural shadow around the forehead. If you guys have quite a small forehead and you don't want to make it look even smaller, then skip this step. If you guys have a fairly big forehead, this is like your golden rule. Like this will be the best thing since sliced bread, I swear. Because it's going to help shrink your forehead so it doesn't look as big, give it a bit more shape, things like that. And I also like to contour my nose as well. I go in with my finger, you guys can go in with a brush. I mean, these are God's tools, so they work best for me. And just go along the edges of my nose to sculpt it out. I like to bring it up and connect it to the brow. Then I'm going to take my beauty sponge, you guys can use a brush if you want. I sometimes use a brush, I don't know, today I feel like using a beauty sponge. And I'm just going to press, don't swipe, just press it into the skin and kind of roll it back into the hairline to fade it in. When I get to that line here, I kind of like to diffuse it a little bit so it's not so obvious I've got a contour line going on. And then just blending out that contour, that nose contour. So to finish off the face, I'm going to put a bit of bronzer on my chin and jawline to sculpt it out a bit more. So I'm just applying it to actually give a bit of warmth to that area and balance to the face. Um, it does help like make your chin look smaller, so if you guys have a big chin that you do want to kind of make look a little smaller, that technique will work as well because it is a shadow. And again, go in with the beauty sponge. As a little final trick with that contour stick, I'm going to apply it under the lip right here. So it's going to make it look a bit more like pouted, like you have fuller lips. It's my favourite technique to do. And I also actually bring it in between my cupid's bow as well. I like to create that shadow, really uh, accentuate that divot right there because it makes my cupid's bow look more pouted as well and makes the lips look fuller again. Now for me, to get the most natural effect to the skin, cream products are like key. Like they look the most natural, the most flattering. And I just feel like they sit so well on the skin. So I'm going to go in with a cream blush. Before I go in with like bronzer and like the powder products, I want to keep it with the creams first. So I'm going to take this blush, put it on the back of my hand to warm up the product. So I tap it on my finger from the product then I'll tap off the excess on my hand and then from there I'll apply it to the contours of my cheeks. You can apply it to the apples. I find on my face it's most flattering on the contours but yeah, up to you boo. Again you want to keep it in the vicinity of that kind of contoured area. If you bring it down too low, you're going to lose the structure to the face. So next I'm going to take a powder. This is the raw pressed powder and I'm taking it on a dry beauty sponge. So I just make sure to get ready, ready, get rid of any creases that may have formed under the eyes. And then I'll go in and bake under my eyes. I bring it down like the sides of my nose just under that contour we created to further define it up. Bring it down the center of the nose just to really highlight these areas. And I will bring it down the triangle in the center of my face as well and just press that in just to highlight that area. Bring it forward, make you look really plump and young and full of life. It just gives balance back to the overall complexion if we highlight the center of the face. I also like to do it in my forehead to really lock the product in place when we place that concealer down so it doesn't settle to any, in into any fine lines. I'm a very expressive person so sometimes if I don't lock in the product it can tend to kind of settle. I also set the eyelids in place and this part's optional but I also like to carve out right under the cheekbone to further define it and give shape to the face. 
and drag it down so it's blending it out slightly. All the powder on the face, I just let it sit there for a little while and just kind of settle into the skin a little bit. I actually curve it up. So some people like to just leave that straight line. I actually like to curve it up slightly like it's hugging the cheekbone. I just think it looks more natural that way. Or at least having it straight from hairline to like corner of the mouth. So while that's kind of settling in, I'm going to just slightly give a bit of shape to my eyes. So I'm going to take a couple shades. I just think because I have brown eyes, I like to use a slight orange undertone. I'll go in with a brown first. I'm going to take the shade Butter from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. And I'm just going to take it on a Zoeva um, soft crease brush. I think this is the 221. And I'm just going to very lightly feather that through the outer corner of my eye through the crease. I'm holding the bottom of the brush so that I apply very little pressure as I'm blending this um, brown through. Keeping it quite high in the crease as well so it's not really on any part of the lid. It's just in the crease area. I prefer not to round out my eyes. I think it looks more flattering if I keep the product focused on the outer portion to kind of accentuate that elongated almond shaped eye look and I also bring it underneath the eyes as well focusing it on the outer portion of my eye barely applying any pressure I actually like to bring it slightly under this portion of the brow as well I just think it helps connect that nose area here that we brought up to the head of the brow I'm just bringing whatever's left on the brush right underneath, um, connecting it from here to here. It helps sculpt the face out more, opens the eyes up, just brings an all kind of connected effect to the face rather than there being gaps and spaces and just not all being kind of symmetrical. Plus it makes my eyes look bigger, just giving that kind of lighter inner corner, having the shadow right under the brow. Next, I'm going to take on this little Real Techniques base shadow brush. I'm going to dip into Creamsicle and apply that to the out, like the um, outer corner of my eye, just slightly, ever so slightly under um, butter, but still keeping that lid space bare. I don't want the product sitting on the lid. And it's just a slightly warmer tone. So it really complements my brown eyes, I feel, and my skin tone. It just gives a slight bit of colour to this look. And whatever's left on the brush, keeping it focused to the outer third of the eye. I'm not bringing it as far in as I brought butter. I'm really just kind of giving a bit of colour and definition to the outer portion of the eye. And taking a dash of butter on that fluffy 221 brush from Zoeva and just blending out any harsh lines that may be present. And grabbing that bronzer brush, I'm just going to feather off any excess powder now that we have sitting on our face from baking before. So now to give the colour and everything back to our face a little bit more, I've got the contour structure, I want to kind of warm up the skin with my NYX contour and highlight kit. I'm going to take the two shades um, from the kit with my bronzer brush from Chi Chi and then just kind of like apply it over top in the areas that we usually bronze. So like the cheekbone area, like forehead, um, chin, jawline, all that jazz. I like the fact that this brush has like a tapered head to it, like a tapered tip, top, like you know what I mean. So like I can apply it softly, like the powder softly to the areas I need. But I can also kind of diffuse that line that we created before. Again, don't bring it down too low because you're going to lose that structure to your face. If you use a heavy hand, you're going to get quite a muddy effect to the skin. And it's not going to look like you know a tan, glowy look to your skin. It's going to look like you just applied a whole heap of mud or something to the perimeters of your face. It's just not going to look as flattering. Just going over where you placed that, con like that contour stick before. Just kind of setting it in place like giving a bit more definition to the jawline, chin area. Wiping off that eyeshadow brush we used before, grabbing some of the bronzer powder that we just used on our face, I'm going to 
slot, like just slot that in right where our cupid's bow is to further accentuate it under the lips as well. I also start to contour my nose as well. Then I just buff out the excess of that powder on my nose with my fluffy bronzer brush. And if I feel like maybe it's slightly too harsh in areas, I'm just going to go back in with that beauty sponge and just help that product melt into the skin. So naturally on our face we have quite a sh like define definish shadow right under here that I've been talking about during this tutorial and what I like to do is grab a bit of a cool tone brown this one is breakup from makeup geek and as you can see it's got like a grayish like undertone to it and what I like to do is actually just kind of place that under the cheekbone so along here to further give a bit more definition and shadow there I'm just going in with my Chi Chi brush again carving out the cheekbones. I always like having my beauty sponge on hand just in case I'm ever too heavy handed or I just need a bit more help with the blending. So I like to next take my blush. This is the infatuation shade from Makeup Geek. It's a nice kind of muted rosy tone so I find it really flattering on the skin. And I'm going to take again that Chi Chi bronzer brush just lightly dab it in to the product and apply it to the back end of my cheeks. I like to do this step after I've done bronzer and contour because if there's any like harsh lines if the contour isn't fully blended in or what have you I can just go in and start kind of helping it blend in a bit more with the blush shade. Next I'm tossing out like highlight or brows. Highlight or brows. I think I might do brows first. So brows are like such an important feature to the face, they really shape it. So just brushing the hairs up initially will help you get that proper guide. And for this more natural glam look I'm not going to go as heavy handed. And I like to take the middle shade from the soft brown palette and just feather that through the head of the brow. I've always been like conscious never to give myself like a sharpie brow or like at least try not to. So I always like to keep a very light hand when it comes to the head of the brow. And then taking the dark brown shade I'll just go along the bottom half of my brow just to find that up. I don't like to carve out my brows on a more natural look. Like if I'm doing a full beat eye makeup look, then I will. But for a look like this, I just prefer to kind of keep it a little bit more like scraggly, I guess if that makes sense. So I'm actually just filling in the tail. I like to leave the tops kind of untouched. And then I'll just brush up whatever product is left in the brush and fill in any sparse gaps in my brows. I'm just going to finish them off with some tinted brow gel from Rimmel. This is the Brow This Way Brow Sculpting Gel in the shade Dark Brown. I like to brush the hairs up, give it a bit more of a full looking brow. So for face highlight today I'm going to take my Violet Voss um, Pro Highlighting Kit and take the shade Star Glow, which is the center one, and it's touch, just a touch of Moon Gleam. And what I like to do initially is see how we applied that kind of highlighty glow at the beginning on the high points here, not up here. That's not the highest point of the um, cheekbone. It's actually just here. So that's where I'm going to apply um, Star Glow, Star Glow, which is that like center shade initially. And I'm going in with a contour brush and just lightly dusting that on the high points here and then what I'm going to do is take the lightest shade and apply that over top of star glow just on the very very high points with an eyeshadow brush also dust some of moon gleam on the tip of my nose star glow and moon gleam just a touch on the points above the brow and I also place some of just moon gleam on 
the cupid eye to bring the lip forward and make it look a bit more pouted. I also bring it on the lip too to do the same effect. So just taking some of Star Glow, not Moon Gleam, I don't want an intense highlight, I just want a little one under the brow bone on a little pencil brush. And to finish off like the complexion face area, I'm going to use my Locket Kat Von D setting spray. This is the 24 hour one, so it lasts like a hella long time. It's so good and it smells like cucumbers. So I'm just going to spritz my face just a few times with that. And of course, you always just want to fan it in to really like set it in place so it actually activates and starts doing its thing. I always like to do this step before mascara or anything like that. Otherwise, um, the mascara like has like a chance of running and stuff and it's just, it's not what you want, you know. So I'm going to go in with my Colossal Mascara from Maybelline and just do actually quite a light coat. I don't like that whole like mascara actual look. I actually quite like the more editorial vibes where like your lashes are kind of hidden like the features are the, like the bronzy skin, the glow, you know, all the other products on the skin. But I will do like a light, like a light coat of it because it does add a bit of something to the face, you know. And I'll only apply it to my top lashes, not my bottom and because I almost forgot this, this is like a vital part to the whole look I'm going to take a nude eye curl and place this to my bottom waterline this is going to open up the eyes so much and I just think oh, it just makes such a difference I'm just doing a light little layer see the difference already like it just makes your eyes look so much more awake and open you look a lot more fresh the effect of a nude eye curl if you've had a big night out, is amazing. So lastly, to finish off the whole face, I'm actually just going to take a lip liner and use a natural lip liner from Rimmel, I believe this one is. It's in this shade 049. And I'm going to slightly overdraw the lips, slightly, just to give it like, you know, that beautiful pouted Instagrammy kind of look. As I'm overlining them, I only overline around the Cupid's bow area. And just taking some of that highlight again, the Moon Gleam one, and just going to apply it back over top just a little bit. Not as intense as before. And that, my friends, is the finished, like, makeup look. So the transition from drab to fab. <laughs> so this really, this is, like, so simple. Like, it will take you no longer than 15 minutes in the morning if you know it step by step. What techniques to do to help really lift the face up. Give a bit more, you know, highlight to the areas that need it. Contour the places that you want to to really give that structure. Warm up the face in the areas that you want. You know, like give a bit of warmth and complex, like the complexion back. And also to hide your acne scars and breakouts. So it's kind of got a bit of everything in this video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed today's look. Please leave a like and comment down below what you thought and any requests that you have in the future. Otherwise, guys, have an awesome day. I love you all so much. I really had a lot of fun doing this video. I think it turned out really, really well. But yeah, let me know what you think. Otherwise, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.